2016 kicked off with two important super yachts being launched. Both yachts are 150 foot long, both are built by relatively new brands and both are available for sale. But that's where the similarities end. In March, the Turkish yard, Saab, launched a 46 meter super yacht called the Saab 46. It has a steel hull and a composite superstructure. And just to give you a flavor of the launch event, take a look at this. The deck plans show that this yacht has been designed with side decks on the main deck that stop just here. Then they have steps leading up to the upper deck where they continue. The reason that this is done is to free up space for an almost full beam master stateroom. And just look at the difference that this makes and the size of the cabin. Not to mention the bathroom. The interior design was created by the Adam Lay Studio. Now these have a rich heritage in yacht design. They're light, they're airy, they use natural, modern materials. And the layout is well distributed with four guest staterooms below deck, the master on the main deck, and plenty of space for guests to hang out and enjoy the sunshine. As a new shipyard, Saab took the unusual and courageous decision to invite an independent yacht surveyor to follow the yacht while it was being built and also after the launch. Now this is something that usually an owner will do for himself when he commissions the build of a super yacht of this size. But by being proactive, Saab have ensured that when they do find a buyer, there'll be no unpleasant surprises for either party. And they didn't invite just some local guy either. They selected the British company Winterbottoms, who, as you'll see from their website, have a rich heritage and history in being involved in some very sizable and prestigious yacht projects. Now, the Saab 46 will soon be in Montenegro and then on to the south of France for the summer, and she'll be available for viewing to qualified clients. The second significant yacht to be launched was the wider 150. She was actually launched at the back end of 2015. And she's a vessel that I've been following very closely ever since her conception three years ago. Now, if you weren't lucky enough to be at that launch event, just take a look at this.
there's so much about this yacht that's worth taking a close look at for anybody who's seriously in the market for a super yacht of this size. Probably the most notable feature of the yacht is that she has no engines. The yacht is run by electricity, generated by four variable speed generators located in the bow. Now, no engines means no engine room, and no engine room means a vast amount of space freed up within the yacht itself. So the cabins are a lot bigger than on any other yacht of that size, um, and there's space for an absolutely huge tender housed inside the yacht itself. The tender storage is actually one of the most notable features that the press have really got hold of and reported on a great deal. And if you have any doubts about how that actually works, then take a look at this. I remember when the concept of what they call the wet launch was first released to the public and there were a few people who expressed doubt as to the practicality of this method. Well, I've been on board and I've seen it work now for myself and I can tell you it's a simple, safe and effective way of keeping a tender inside the yacht. Certainly a lot better than lifting up a large tender with a crane as it swings from side to side and the crew try to keep hold of it, as you often see on many, many super yachts. Now the wider 152 will soon be leaving Ancona and on her way to the south of France where she also will be available for inspection by qualified clients. So if you'd like to take a look at either one of the yachts that I've covered in this video blog, of course I'd be delighted to arrange that for you. And if you're just a yacht fanatic, you enjoy being kept up to date with the industry, then don't forget to subscribe to this channel.